All right, guys, I'm going to show you how I make my holsters. Um, it's not a lot of differences than what I do that other people do, but I do do it extremely cheaply. And I've made a lot of them, and it works really well. So for a press, you don't need anything fancy. I use two pieces of wood. Um, the only thing you really have to buy is this foam. You can use scrap wood if you got the right size. Just a little oversize of your foam. Do spend money on thermal foam. Um, I'm using a small oven. I cut all my Kydex to be as large as the oven just to give me the most flexibility. May not be enough for large full-size pistols but for carry guns it works pretty good. So for my revolvers if you see my other videos I like to make these um, a cutout for the cylinder make it as thin as possible. Um, I've already made them for all my revolvers which are plenty so I'm going to make one for my Bursa Thunder Plus. So this is a good pistol because it's very thin up to this point and the bulk is here. So the idea is to get it so it'll ride. You can see on the pants. Um, so the bulk is outside. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up my Kydex and I'm going to lay down my pistol and I always do taco style so I'm not messing with rivets um, I can adjust the tension and I can remove a lot of the holster because there's a seam at the bottom so once I get it hot I'm going to place it about here I'm going to fold this over so I'm covering the pistol from here down I'm going to remove material up to here and then just a little bit of the barrel over here will be contained but my belt's going to be going here right so like I said the bulk of the pistol is outside the waistband I'm keeping the uh, clip about the uh, the trigger the trigger guard so the clips gonna be here so it'll ride with my belt here like so so it's a minimalist holster um, I'm gonna be using just a, a cropping saw to make my cut drawing a line uh, drilling holes and I've got a bunch of hardware here that I use to uh, fill in from there. And I'll probably make a little holster for an extra magazine as well. So, uh, the only thing I, only thing I use is a thermometer, the digital one, because these things are on or off. So you sit at a temperature and it doesn't regulate the heat. It just goes all the way on or all the way off. So you really have to check it to make sure. So I'm going to warm it up. I don't pre-warm my uh, foam. It just takes longer to set. There's no reason to do it. Uh, we're going to remove most of the material anyway. So uh, I'm going to get her fired up. I'm going to originally set it at maybe 250 and then I'm going to inch it up from there. Uh, don't overshoot it. Um, and again measure check the kydex. I'm going to put it um, texture side up in the oven and then I'm going to do my fold and then I'll show you how I cut it. It's really simple. There's no reason to buy holsters anymore. Technology is so easy and cheap. Um, if you have more than one handgun it's worth making it. And I use this for um, powder coating bullets and other things, annealing. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I have a working uh, oven for other than cooking. Just keep them separate. So I'll show you when I get to the next step. Alright, so now the gun's in my press. I just have these two super cheap C clamps I buy at the local store. Um, it's pressed in there. Got sort of a funky fold. So. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can have another go at it. If you screw it up, uh, just take the heat gun and go along the, the, the fold until it gently opens. Set it back in your oven and heat it up again. So I got about 300 degrees on the surface of the plastic. So I set it about 250, put it in there, and I just crank it so I just hear that tick where it starts to kick on again and then I check it 
and be real careful because you can overshoot with these very easily like I said it's either 100% on or it's 100% off and it just regulates the time that it fluctuates so some people put in for 15 minutes I don't think that's necessary especially since I'm not preheating anything um, you know I'd probably say eight minutes or so you can start to open it up um, because I'm pressing over the trigger guard the gun's not going to want to come out um, that's fine as long as it's a little warm I can split it apart and pull it out um, I'm not too worried about the top part because I'm going to cut that away um, up to the front sight and the crease is below the trigger guard so I don't have to like put a pencil or any anything up to allow the sights to come in and out because those are basically going to be exposed the rear ones above the belt line the front one I'm just going to leave a little on the side to cover it so so far I mean these are probably eight dollars each and the foam I forget how much that was but it wasn't expensive the wood I had from a different project so again very minimal I've had the toaster oven I just bought a cheap laser thing so real cheap so far hardware is a little on the pricey side but it's still cheaper than buying your own holster so uh, you know if you buy in bulk you get more so I would suggest buying a lot and then just keeping it because you're eventually going to buy more guns and you're going to want to build more stuff so uh, once it gets out of the press uh, we'll go from there and uh, there's a few things I do that make it uh, important steps and I'll, I'll mention that but it's really simple from here on out okay so I took it out after about five minutes and this is what we got so what's important is you don't want the gun angled like this because you won't have this room here you want this because this is where we're going to drill holes for our clip that's going to go over a trigger guard um, you don't have to worry about see how it looks weird the um get some light on there see that fold looks kind of weird that doesn't matter we're going to cut all that away um, uh, what you want to do now is draw your lines so get a white pencil and you can remove the gun if you want but you're going to draw your lines here so you're going to make a little cut down here and do draw it don't just freehand cut because it'll look stupid draw your lines I generally like to come close to the trigger guard here I'm going to go along the slide and then I'm going to come up right about where the front side is come down and then back around it's going to be very s small I'll try to do this on camera but we'll see So that's basically what it's going to look like, and I probably could have done better if I took my time. Uh, but I would like a little bit of a roundness here, so as you're sticking in your pants, uh, curve these out. You can come out a little, or you can do more or less, doesn't matter. doesn't matter if the barrel's open on the bottom. Some people think that's good. If you're swimming in a lake, it allows it to dry and drain out. Um, you know, it, it just depends what you want. I might adjust this line before I do my cut. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a vise, bench vise, and I'm going to cut. Of course, with my saw, I'm going to cut both sides at once, so I don't have to draw on the other side, but that's basically what it's going to look like. Alright, just to show you the setup here, super cheap vise. Just put a sock in it so you don't scratch the holster. Made my first cut here, and I don't know if you can see, it's it's going to leave a lot of marks on there. So two things you want to use is 
to remove, I guess, the three steps. There's a lot of material that you use the saw. The next is going to be the file to remove small bumps and shape. And then use, I just use a sanding block to get the burrs out. The sandpaper will leave um, little tiny stones inside the holster, so wash it out or blow it out uh, before you're done. So I just cut here. And I'll show you why that's important, but that's going to allow your finger to get up under the up under the the gun when you do your draw. So you always want to do that cut, and then just follow your line. So sometimes I'll cut, and if it's tricky to make a corner, I'll just go and then whoosh, up here take that chunk out, readjust it in the vise, and then continue to make my cut. So I get chunks. Like here's a cylinder chunk from one of my guns. Here's um, you know, a big flat piece of it, but uh, we'll keep going and I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, I'm about to make some more cuts with my cropping saw. Um, it's a little bit of a learning curve because it's unsupported, it's a little floppy up here, so it tends to want to, well, you'll, you'll see when you do it. Um, you want to make sure you're flat so it's touching both sides equally and you know make the motion with not a lot of downward pressure let the let the teeth do the work lots of sawing not much pressure and then just make your cuts and turn and take chunks so I'm going to start off really light it's going to want to skip off the plastic so be very careful when you're starting all right first cut has been made and it's ugly and rough but don't worry about that it's very easy to clean up uh, you'll get points like this, that's kind of like a sharp edge. Uh, those are going to round off with the file. So if you don't know how to round off, I'm basically going to go forward and like this, this motion. So it's not straight, it's a curve as I go, like this technique. That's how I'm going to round that off. And then afterwards, I'm going to hit it with the, with the sandpaper. And you can make it as pretty as you want. These are tools to me. They're not show pieces. So uh, function above all. And we'll set the tension at the end. It's a little tricky because as it's warm, it's going to feel looser. And then when it gets super cold, it'll tighten up. So you're going to have to make it looser than you would want it um, and, and test it out. So... We'll get to that step after I finish the rest of my cuts. All right, so here we are. I did my uh, final cut. Um, I don't know if it's focusing, but uh, my final edge. Focus, please. Focus. Ah, there we go. It's uh, smooth. I hit it with sandpaper. You can still see some tooth marks on there. It just depends on how much you care. I care about comfort, not necessarily looks, but you can sand it even more to get rid of those, or you can hit it with uh, a lighter and melt the ends, but it's smooth to touch. There's no corner on here. Hit this good, hit this good. Let's see what it looks like with the pistol inside. All right. Yeah, I know, I need a tripod. Sue me. Let's do this. Okay. So, the important thing here is this part here, there's nothing over the slide. The slide's the thickest part. This is where my belt's going to ride. So, this is the thinnest holster you can make. There's a little bit covering the end for protection protects the front sight, but this is below the pant line, so you're not going to feel that thickness. You're going to feel where it touches your belt, which is here. So, next step is going to be um, get the clip, the hardware on, but there's no riveting. It's super easy, super cheap. Um, that cut I made down here is something you grab like this. Your, your middle finger isn't hitting the, the holster. Right, so this took me 10 minutes, 
15 minutes at the most at this point. It, like I said, it's cheap, it's easy, it's fast. You can crank them out um, pretty good. It's super minimalist. There's a, a lot of tension. Adjust the tension now. Don't do it with the clip. If you have a plastic clip, the heat gun will damage the integrity of the clip. It'll make it come undone, not have the right tension. So do not hit it with heat. If you have to make adjustment with the clip on, cover it with a sock or remove it. Um, so we're going to adjust the, the tension. And how I'm going to do that is with my heat gun. I'm just going to take the heat gun, heat it up, heat it up, heat it up, and go in and out, in and out, in and out. And again, you want it looser than what you want because when it gets all the way cool, which will take a while, it'll tighten up a bit. So if you go too much, just heat it up again and then press it in. It's all the trigger guard. That's all you need to keep it. The, this here keeps it from rocking out, so it doesn't rock, but this will keep your tension. And uh, what I'm going to do is put the, the clip over, I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to center punch, then I'm going to drill. Make sure you center punch. So we'll go from there. Okay, I have set my tension. And everyone will have their own likenesses, and you can set it either super tight if you're going to be doing somersaults, or you can set it super loose if you're one of those speedy guys. I like to make it so it'll hold this way, but not much more than that. You can see it's almost halfway out. So, let's see if we can get that on camera. Bring her, bring her back down here for a second. Yeah, sloppy camera work. So two fingers comes out. I want to be able to draw it easily. So it's not a hard yank. I don't like a hard yank. Almost like a speed scabbard. As long as I get a grip on it and pull, and your your belt gripping the gun will add a little extra too. And don't worry about the jiggliness, as like I said, it's going to be in your in your pants uh, on the clip. So that's where I like it. If you like more or less, it's up to you. Um, that's what I like. So now we're going to set the hardware. All right. So what I did now was I took my holster, so if you see these, this clip, uh, let me find a brand. Um, I like these uh, Quick Clip Pro ones. This is uh, 1.75 inches. Uh, these are my favorite. They're easy to get on quick, to get on and off. I always do one clip st style with a little nub here so I can just grab it, it's in, take it out in a second, right? Um, you notice there's a rise when it gets to the trigger guard and there's a little bit of a indentation here. So what I do is I line that up and I put just a little bit of cant and I just use the two screws. This one's elongated so I will be able to adjust the cant within a certain range, but I like to get it as close as I can initially and then just do micro adjustments at that point. So I fill in as much as I can, which is going to be oval in a circle, and then I'm going to use a center punch. Center punch is just a punch with a tip on it, a very strong tip. And I'm going to hit it in the center of each one. I'm going to use an anvil underneath, something hard. And I'm going to give it a whack with a hammer, make my indentations, and then I'm going to drill. I'm using Chicago screws. <coughs> so, again, no riveting machines or anything, just these screw, screw in the Chicago screws and a couple of rubber stoppers. I like to be some tension on it, so I like it to be so it's squishing the rubber so that. Um, there's some tension if I'm going to adjust it or not, and uh, I'll show you that later. I use a little bit of blue Loctite, and I just cinch them down, and it's that easy. So I'm going to do my center punch and drill my holes. 
Um, I just clean up the hole a little bit with a sharp knife. So you'll see some burrs on there. And then uh, we'll have a working holster, hopefully. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I put a spacer on here. And it should kind of go screw through the back. And there's a little bit of metal poking through. When I put my clip on top, um, it's not going to poke all the way through because what I want to do is I want to as I tighten it down um, compress the rubber so it's going to give me some resistance as I adjust the cant it'll stay where I leave it if I put enough force it'll it'll rub against and there's going to be some friction but it's not going to be loose um, so yeah that's what I'm doing so I don't want to be too little but I don't want to be too much uh, just a little bit of metal sticking through so that uh, the metal doesn't go all the way through the clip itself but once I compress it it will so I'm going to put a touch of just a touch on the last couple threads not a lot um, and I'm going to put it through and tighten it up and I'll show you the finished product alright guys there's the finished product it's easily adjusted Conceals great, comes out quickly. Uh, it's easy to put the um, the gun into your waistband, like a crossbreed style. Uh, you have to take your pants off. If you ever tried that? You're undoing your whole pants. This is so easy. It's small. It's light. It's thin. It rides high. I want to put it in my pants. There it is. I want to take it out. There it is. With the clip, unless you get that, it stays on really well. Um, it's very fun, cheap, easy. Last thing I like to do, if you make a lot of these, is I get a punch set. Let me show you one. I just buy a cheap punch set, like this is a zero. Um, and I can write on here just by stamping it in. I can write Bursa, or if there's a code, I can put model 10 or whatever I want down here. And if you screw it up, hit it with the heat gun, it'll pop right out. Uh, which is why I love Kydex. So that's the cheap and easy way. No machines, no rivets, no band saws, no uh, powered sanders, none of that. Just cheap and easy. You can make it for any gun you want. If you have guns that aren't very popular, the Bursa is not super popular. Uh, it's getting more, but uh, you can buy a brand new weird gun and make your own thing, and uh, you know, it works well. Uh, easier is to put it in, more likely I'm going to use it. Um, it's the thinnest, thin is comfortable, thick is not. So if I can get it thinner, it'll be more comfortable. It um, doesn't ride against my skin, it touches my underwear. I've never had a gun rust, I never had a problem with it. Works good with revol revolvers, especially but even with pistols. So, there it is, guys. I guess I'll just do one last follow-up. There you can see BTP, which I'm understanding is Bursa Thunder Plus. I just used a little anvil underneath, my punch, and an old hammer. Give it a whack. Um, make sure you have it oriented right. You gotta think backwards. Um, it's a little bit of an art to get it lined up the way you want it, but again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to uh, let me know at a glance. Oh, this is for the Bursa. If I grab another one, it's for something else. Uh, similar size guns might look the same. So, marking it, this is one permanent, easy way. If you want to fill it with something, make it look fancy, you can do that. But just by looking at it, I know what that means. So, that's really the end.